G'day everyone, I am gonna be corrupting Disney princesses. Confession, two months ago, I was gonna record this video and I actually started filming and it didn't happen. I just sort of didn't find a reason to get excited about it. What I realized I can do, randomly generate a Disney princess and a Disney villain and use that as my design prompt. I don't get to pick the princesses by mishmashing them with a villain I don't know either. I think that's way more fun. Now, just as an example of some of the, the villains or princesses that might pop up, I'll generate eight. There we go, Cinderella, Aurora, Belle, Pocahontas, Tiana, Rapunzel. So, you know, like there's there's the well-known ones and some of the, there's some of the ones that don't get enough spotlight. But then villains is even more like the Queen of Hearts or Sid Phillips from Toy Story. So the fact that it's entirely out of my control and I might not even know who some of them are, but they all have such a strong vibe, I think is gonna be really fun. Let's start with our first. I'm gonna generate one Disney princess I'm gonna start off with Moana, very cool. And Moana is gonna be mashed up with, drum roll please. <laughs> oh no. What's Rattigan from? Basil the Great Mouse Detective. Oh my God, he's so extra. Look at that. All right, yeah, no, this is a total vibe. I'm gonna have a lot of fun in this video. Now, of course, first order of business is uh, setting up my references. Now I should say right off the bat, I'm not just going <laughs> we want enough of the original princess that it's recognizable. It's still that same character just in a world where they somehow ended up looking and acting like the villains. So Moana, prepare yourself because you are about to go on an adventure you never signed up for and maybe uh, maybe shouldn't even be imagined. Now, in leaving to this, I needed a few more references because while I am basing Moana's new shift into villainy on Radigan, at the same time, I can't have the design elements match. Like, she can't really be in a suit and have a top hat and still feel like Moana. And adding that to my references gave me a really strong foundation to lean on to have Moana dressed up in a really commanding way, like Radigan, but in a way that sticks to the aesthetic of the Moana universe. By incorporating and sketching out Moana in an extremely confident pose with the elements of Polynesian leadership, it ended up with what I think is a pretty cool aesthetic. Ready for line work. As this is coming together, moving on to color is where I actually really can lean into Radiant style. Not specifically the clothing, but more the color scheme. And it actually marries across quite well, because Moana does have a little bit of red in her dress, which in this case I'm carrying over into a cape, and otherwise the rest of her styling becomes much more black and formal looking. base colors down, I was pretty happy. I wanted to make sure to have some really cool details in there, specifically the facial tattoos. That is a really cool look. I think will also help accentuate Moana's design in a way that carries over to the formality of Radigan. Then it's just a matter of going through the piece and adding in the final touches. Little bits of shading and of course, some blood stains all over the oar that she's holding, which she used to use while singing about how far she'll go across the ocean. Well, now she uses it while going a little too far with people who uh, who cross her. I know it's pretty dark, but let me just say, when looking up Radigan and what he was like in The Great Mouse Detective, he was pretty brutal. He literally killed mice in front of their friends. He's got a pretty high kill count as far as Disney cartoon villains go. So, you know, Moana inspired by Radigan's gotta be pretty brutal too. Which is why I added in a nice coastal background from the Moana universe but of course, subtly colored in the water to be red from the direction of Moana's feet, where the bodies are. Now, 
And we are just getting started. Let's see who our new, oh my God, look at, look at the amount of advertisements on this website. Okay, generate. Our next Disney princess is Elsa. Oh, I could use her in the thumbnail. Now this could go in any direction. El and Elsa is, I'm gonna hazard a guess and say, the most beloved and timeless Disney princess of all time. Highest grossing, most emulated and dressed up as. So the pressure's, the pressure's hot on this one, uh, but I'm gonna be mixing her with, <laughs> no, no, really? Sid Phillips from Toy Story. Okay, I got some ideas. I think this isn't stupid. I think this might be just weird and evil enough to work. Now, both Elsa and Toy Story are 3D animated feature films. I wanted to try and paint this one in a bit more of a smooth aesthetic. That's at least alluding to the smooth shading of 3D animation. And for the design of Elsa, I basically just reworked her story in my head. I mean, let's face it, she grew up without parents, with magical powers, and was told to control her emotions in unhealthy ways. Add that to the fact that she has the magical power, this is canon here, to create sentient beings. She made Olaf. Olaf is a thinking, feeling, living entity. And just like how Sid was considered sadistic in the Toy Story universe because of his willingness to hurt these sentient toys, well, let's just say Elsa suppresses her emotions in more unhealthy ways in this story by taking it all out on Olaf. <laughs> this is really dark. I'm sorry, you guys, but I love this a little bit too much. And with the sketch in place and the solid design that I am pretty happy with, it just comes down to blocking the color areas, which one at a time using a clipping mask, I can just roughly shade in just to bring to a little bit more of that 3D feel. Let me just point out how quick and easy painting Elsa's hair is. That's the thing I'm most proud of with my brushes is that we have them so beautifully combined, but also easy for certain things. Like these are the three hair brushes that in the space of 30 seconds, I can have really quite, I think, impressive hair roughed in on a concept artwork like this. Combine that with the textures and the feel of my oil paint brushes that I'm using through the rest of the piece and the effects brushes, as you'll see later, that makes my brushes what I think is honestly the ultimate tool for digital artists. If you haven't seen them, go check them out. My pro digital brushes, which are of course bundled with my digital painting guide, which I made with Alicia. So if you want to learn how to digitally paint, whether it's quick but effective digital painting concepts or really complex pieces that are beautifully put together, all of that is in my digital painting guide, which you can get for 20% off with my digital brush. 83 brushes to cover all of your needs and they're incredible. And as you can see through the pieces we're gonna be making here, it's really simple to get really different aesthetics and it all really works together. That's what they were made for. Go check it out, links in the description and anyone who gets those is directly supporting the channel and I really appreciate it. But with Olaf's horrified face nicely shaded in, adding a little bit of some highlights to the shard of ice in her hand that she's planning to stab Olaf with. Just like Moana, I put her in an environment that makes sense of her context and really completes the piece. Bit of a soft blur on the icy background of Elsa's castle behind her and a few really easy to add and really effective visual effects using the fog and snow brushes from my digital brush pack. With all that done, I honestly think this is an unnervingly good combination of Sid and Elsa. All right, lucky last, but certainly not least, the princess I will be finishing off on is Mulan. Love it, awesome. And I'm gonna mix her with the Disney villain, Scar. Okay, that's weirdly cool. I mean, how much do I animalize her? I don't know. There's room for experimentation on this one. Let's see where we end up. Now, I am not going to make Mulan more like a tiger, but I am gonna lean on the design elements of Scar that make him so effective as a villain, at least aesthetically, and incorporate those into Mulan. As you can see, I added the visual references of Shan Yu, the villain from the Mulan story, for a number of reasons. First of all, his color palette is much closer to Scar's. And second of all, by using him as as much of a visual reference as Scar, it makes sense of this transformation in the universe of Mulan. Imagining a world where Shan Yu actually won this war 
And as a result, Mulan becomes a general in his army. She, she accepts the offer to rule with him and continues to enslave the rest of China. Mulan is a traitor and has joined the Mongols, just like Scar was the traitor who joined the hyenas. And just like Scar, she bears a scar on her face that holds an untold story of some of the devious actions that they've taken in the past. The line brush for this was my Impact Ink brush, which as you can see, just has that little bit of grit and texture to it, which I think works really well for this. And now in adding the color, I really just went simple with this because both The Lion King and Mulan are 2D animated films. So I wanted to go for that cell shaded style, picking out the flat color bases for all these areas and then just enlarging my impact ink brush, adding a transparent overlay on top and roughing in the shadows in all of the areas of the piece. Tying it all together and giving it that little bit of polish, which of course is brought together in a really nice way, just like my other pieces, by slapping in a background from the movie, giving it a bit of a blur, and of course, adding a bit of that fog and snow to add that bite of cold to my villainous Mulan. <laughs> And there you have it. Let's just recap one at a time. Villain Moana combined with Radagast. Wait, is that Lord of the Rings character? Ratatouille? Radagast is freaking Lord of the Rings. I weirdly love this. Then of course we have Elsa combined with Sid from Toy Story. Again, it's dark, but it works weirdly well. And last but not least, Mulan combined with Scar. I'm so glad I actually came back to this concept and mixed it with something a little bit different. By taking the choice away from me and mixing it with a villain that I also couldn't control makes it for a totally interesting challenge that actually ended up with results that I, I'm just really happy with. And I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you did, please hit the like button. Otherwise, that is it for now. Thank you for watching. And I'm gonna see you in, a, in another video if you are around to watch it. If you're not, well, I'll miss you. And I'll think of you every day. And the times we, the time we, do you remember the time? Don't go, stay, subscribe, never leave, subscribe. Don't you dare leave me, subscribe. Don't you, make sure to join me for the next video. And until next time, I'll see you later. Awkward out. Subscribe.